What is up everyone, it's your boy Infrared. Welcome to the Scott Report as today I bring you an anime review of ReZero Episode 8. This week they decided to slow it down a little bit after breaking your neck for the past two or three episodes as we got the most chillaxed episode that we have from this series to date. I don't know, it's like this and Boku no Hero this week, they both were real chill. They're really laid back episodes that gave us time to absorb what just happened and build the world even more. As this episode entirely was world building. That, all, that was all it was. And you need that type of break. Because you can't always have breakneck action. You can't always have cliffhangers. Even though it will be nice. Sometimes you need to just take the time out, get to know the characters, find out about the world that we're in. Especially when you're dealing with a 24 episode series like this. The time that they took to build these type of things was really appreciated. So without further ado, let's get down to the breakdown of this episode. Starting off, Subaru is right back like he left something in the bed after what happened last weekend where he decided to jump off the cliff and kill himself. So he gets to start over and he's going to try to do everything immediately the right way. He's going to try to befriend Rem and Rom so they don't try to kill him. He's going to try to ease his suspicions with Roswell so they don't suspect him anymore. And he's going to try to find out who the shaman is that was responsible for putting a curse on him. And he tries to do this right away to the point of exhaustion where he is just working over and over and over to try to win the trust and the friendship of everybody immediately so he can have more time to plan and do what he needs to do. The biggest point of this episode though is we finally found out how magic works in this universe or this world as we spend a lot of time with um, Puck and Amelia learning about magic. First and foremost, there are two type of magic users in this universe. There's spirit users and there's magic users. Magic users like Betty absorb their power or get their power straight from mana. Spirit users like Amelia are people who get their power from the atmosphere itself. So that's the difference between the two. There's also the four elements that come in when you're a magic user as well, which determines which attributes you are, which is, of course, earth, wind, fire, and what's it, earth, wind, fire, and water. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> so it's those elements. But there's also two rare cases as well. In addition to those four, there's also light magic and dark magic or shadow magic. And we find out that Subaru is a shadow magic caster. So you know it's a light magic caster out there somewhere. We also learned that magic is regulated by something called a gate that is within everybody else. And that gate regulates how freely or how much magic you can use at one time loosely. We find out more about Subaru who is a shadow type. And for all intents and purposes, he's a debuffer. Shadow types, they're good at or they're specialized in, you know, blinding people, cutting out hearing, making darkness poison for example so he's going to be a good support character but he can still be very broken if he learns how to use this because you know if you get into a fight and you go against somebody who can take your vision away somebody who can take your sound away you're pretty much screwed anything that can help this dude die less is what he needs right now so he is going to train with Puck to try to learn how to use magic of course you know he's trying to learn too quick and do things right away and think he has it but he really doesn't as he works himself to the point of exhaustion trying to learn these things we also learn more about curses from Betty and we also learn how curses work as she says that curses are no different than a regular magic spell in its infancy if you can catch it before it starts up, it's just like stopping a regular magic spell. She also may have the ability to find a curse before it happens. She also gives us very important information on the Jealous Witch, who is indeed Satella. She says the Jealous Witch used to be part of the Seven Deadly Sins. There were seven witches who all represented a sin, and jealousy, I guess, is one of the sins. However, she killed or devoured the other six so she's the only one standing and of course is the most powerful witch out there which kind of still gets my head turning about everything with Subaru overall because I think that somebody has to know what Subaru can do and if it's anybody it's probably a jealous witch and she's probably what's causing everything like this another big, big plot point that we get in the episode is Betty saying that in order for someone to put a curse on you you have to have had some type of physical interaction with them in order for them to do it. This kind of narrows everything down. And this is jumping ahead a bit to the end of the episode. But Subaru suspects that he got to the castle and he had to curse. 
So whatever happened to him must have happened in the village in one of his lives. Or, and he always went to the village with Rem. However, the one time he didn't go to the village with Rem is when she came back and she died the same way that he did. So whoever's putting these curses must be in that village. However, it might be a little bit far off. I feel that, again, I'm saying that somebody must know what Subaru can do. I think, remember when he first met Emilia, she went by Satella. And the second time he met her, she didn't want to be called by that. She did not want to be known as a jealous witch. I think maybe he really did meet the jealous witch Satella the first time. And that's probably who put the curse on him. Maybe it still is somebody in the village. But something has to add up eventually of why this is going on with Emilia and the, and the, and the jealous witch. And finding out what's going on with these two. Just something isn't adding up. And I can't wait till we find out what's going on with them. We also learned that it's probably why Amelia is so ashamed of being a half elf, half human. Because whoever this jealous witch is, is a spitting image of her. They said she is a mage with, who is half human, half elf, and has silver hair. Subaru deduces though that maybe she decided to go by the jealous witch in order to get herself out of this Game of Thrones type of situation she's in to rule everything. The last big thing that we got in this episode was probably the sweetest scene that we've seen in this series so far and once again I gotta clap my hand for the voice actor of Subaru for bringing out such pure emotion in this. As, as I've mentioned before, he's been working himself to death. I mean, he did everything that he needed to do in his castle in the first day. He's working himself to the point of exhaustion to where he's going to pass out and he's beginning to feel sick. Amelia notices this and she pulls him to a side and just kind of say, Hey, you know, you need to relax. You need to slow down. And it's at this point that he begins to confide in her and breaks down once again. That he's just trying to do everything he can to make everything right. As he's laying in her lap and he's crying right now. He's really breaking down and tearing up because he wants everything to be perfect so bad. And he, every time he tries to do it, it seems like everything comes up worse than it was before. So that was a really sweet moment for her to actually hold his head in her lap and, you know, coax him a little bit, even though he's excited. At the same time, he's still crying because he just wants to make everything right. Rem comes in and sees this going on and, and Amelia assures her that he is a good person. So that kind of eases her suspicions on him as well. Even though, you know, Rem and Roswald are still being told to look after him and not to let um, Rem know about like what's going on with him and to keep her away. So he's beginning to change everything and he did it so quickly. And also, as I was mentioning, he found out that whoever put this curse on him must have been for the village. So that's where we're off in our next episode is to the village to try to track down this shaman. However, Rem and Rom, who are now on better terms with them earlier on, are going with them as well. And that was the end of the episode. Again, it was a really chill. It was a really relaxed episode. White Box, once again, using all the time that they can. We got an opening this week, but we didn't get a closing as they use that to extend the story. Next week, we're heading to the village to see if we can stop the shaman. And overall, we learned about magic. We learned more about this universe. So overall, this was a very good episode. I mean, this series is wearing the crown of anime of the season right now. And if it keeps going the way it's going, it's going to be up there for anime of the year. We'll just have to see in December once everything is said and done. So that was it for the episode, guys. If you liked this video, go ahead and drop it a like. And if you want to hear more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as I bring you guys content almost every day right now. And of course, as I always say, you guys can be anywhere on YouTube right now, but you chose to listen to me. And for that, I really appreciate it. So thank you guys very much. I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Be sure to join me. Well, be sure to join me Tuesday <laughs> as I review Joker game. Wednesday, I'll have Bungo Stray Dogs. Thursday, Cabaneri, as well as One Piece manga review and live reaction to Hunter Hunter manga review. And then we're right back at it on Friday with JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. We start everything over again. So on that note... It's your boy Infrared signing out with the Scott Report. See you soon.